Greetings, mad scientists. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to a brand new series of RimWorld Biotech called The First Wendigo. Before I start, a disclaimer. This series is not intended for children. I'll be covering some of the most heinous and violent game mechanics that RimWorld has to offer, as well as committing a veritable assortment of crimes against humanity, like involuntary sterilizations, ovum extractions, butchering children, cannibalism, torture, execution, and more. The characters in the series are not heroes, they are villains, and the actions I take in the series are to serve a villainous story. The other series I have running concurrently to this one are not evil themed and are more family friendly. So if this series is not for you, consider checking out my other series, RimWorld Biotech Doomsday Vault or RimWorld Biotech We Are Legion. If you'd like to skip the overview, please use YouTube chapters, but I highly suggest you listen to the genetics overview if you're unfamiliar with the mechanics of RimWorld Biotech genetics. The story of the first Wendigo. RimWorld The First Wendigo is a vanilla RimWorld biotech series about a twistedly evil mechanator named Wendy Gorin, who leaves the Empire's Glitter World Academy to seek a stronger alternative to the Xenogerm project. Her work is deeply immoral and illegal under Empire law, but she keeps them sufficiently appeased so as to not be sanctioned or shut down. Her plan is to abduct the various species of the world and breed monstrous soldiers that can't be disabled by xenogerm implantation. The rules. Colonists must not have any forbidden genes and have at least one desirable gene. Slaves must not have forbidden genes. Colonists and slaves must not be allowed to breed naturally. And then the goals. Become a royal countess and breed the first Wendigo. I'll explain what that means in just a second. The scenario is random is Randy losing his fun with default factions on 300 by 300 map size with all DLCs enabled. It's a mechanator scenario with an extra tunneler at the start. Ideological memes are supremacist, transhumanist, cannibal, and human primacy. The mods, CM, color-coded Mubar, no time change sounds, Fahrenheit, and Celsius. So, what is the first one to go? So this is a little complicated at first glance, but essentially the first Wendigo, the goal of breeding the first Wendigo is to introduce a subset of germline genes to be inherited by future generations and to avoid other genes. So this is a little chart I made. So at the top, you have the must have genes. The first Wendigo must contain those subset of genes. The ones in red are unique to specific species like dark vision to dirt moles. And then the ones in blue and purple are ones to avoid. And then the ones in yellow are ones that we want but are not unique to a species, like strong melee damage is not unique. It is shared amongst dirt moles and Edekin and Neanderthals. So the goal is to get two individuals that have these genes so that they can spawn an offspring that is, quote-unquote, the first Wendigo. All full-fledged colonists must not have any of the forbidden genes and must have at least one of the desired ones. And then slaves can't have any forbidden genes. So here we have the world that we live in. Uh, I picked a nice, isolated ice sheet in the middle of nowhere so as to be left alone by prying eyes of the Empire. I don't have to keep it a secret, but we are breaking some laws, so it's best to do it a little off-grid. Um, as I said, the factions are unchanged entirely. Default factions all the way around, with the Glitter World Empire as the Shattered Empire. Uh, the only thing I changed about them is their memes, their supremacist, transhumanist, and human primacy. And we are the same, plus cannibalism. As far as our ideologies go, very straightforward. Uh, f research is faster because we're led by a brilliant mad scientist. And then everything is pretty much in line with the memes. Nothing interesting or special here. Uh, one relic called the Glitter Wand, and that is it. As far as the map tile goes, 
It's a totally randomly generated ice sheet. It has a few bugs, has geysers, and it has Wendy. So Wendy, Wendy Gorin, is a baseliner with nothing special about her own personal genetics. And if I could click back on her, instead of the Mechanator starts being reclusive, she is not. She wants to start a family, a family of monsters, but a family nonetheless. Asexual, fast learner, sanguine, industrious, and bloodlust. She has also started with some mechs. So there is a constructoid, lifter, and tunneler mech, uh, all to be raffled off soon. In terms of her skills, you can see them here. And then the mechanator start also starts with uh, microelectronics, basic mech tech, and battery tech. So we'll have a little bit of extra technology to start. All right. Um, another thing that I want to explain before I kick off is how genes work. Because I think that's going to be a little important. So I am going to actually spawn a character here uh, to show you. And I will be deleting them. So here we have, oh boy, your name is Nag. Here we have Nag. This is a good example. So Nag here is a genie. And genies come with germline genes that they pass on to their children and xenogenes that they do not. So a genie is actually just a human with implanted xenogenes. The same goes for, uh, it, the same goes for hussars, and let me apply that now. As you can see, hussars are just humans with a bunch of extra xenogenes. And then the same goes for highmates. Again, a human with a bunch of implanted xenogenes. And also, true of sangophages, a human with a lot of implanted xenogenes. So sangophages, hussars, genies, and hymates are not actually species, they're just genetically engineered. And because they're not actually species, they don't pass down any of those genes. But if we take a look at a dirt mole, for instance, these are germline, germline genes. All of these genes can be passed down. If two dirt moles have a kid, they will have a kid dirt mole. However, Hybridization gets a little weird. So, for instance, if you have a Dirt Mole with strong melee damage that breeds with a Neanderthal with strong melee damage, that doesn't actually guarantee that the child gets strong melee damage. Once you go into hybridization, game gets a little weird. So, that's more or less how the germline and xenogenes work. I'll be putting out a fuller tutorial at some point, but I thought that was very important for you guys to understand. Um before getting into the into the weeds so that you understand what the purpose of the first Wendigo project is. Because the Empire here, they rely very heavily on Hussars for defense. 15% of their population is made of Hussars and 10% of Genies. So about 25% of the Glitter World Empire, the Shatter Empire, are genetically engineered workers and soldiers. But all you have to do to take their genetic engineering away is implant a Xeno germ. So that gets into a little bit of an additional game mechanic, and it's here. When you capture people, or alternatively, you can volunteer, you can go into his gene extractor, and it has a chance to extract random genes from your genetic code that aren't archite genes. I'll get into that in a minute. So the gene extractor can pull genes out, and then you can bank the genes into a gene bank, and then assemble the genes with a gene assembler and implant them into someone. So if you have genes assembled in a xenogerm to implant in an, individu in, in an individual, if you implant xenogerms into hymates, genies, hussars, and sangophages, you actually remove what makes them a hymate, a genie, a sangophage, or a hussar. It deletes all of their xenogerms and replaces whatever you put back in them. So for instance, if you're a vampire and you don't want to be a vampire anymore, implant a xenogerm into yourself and all of a sudden, Poof, you're not a vampire anymore. That's why Wendy here is trying to breed a better soldier, one that cannot be deleted genetically. So the other thing that I mentioned there, and I'll have to spawn another dummy pawn here, is the Sangophages, because it's yet another additional concept. So Yuri, you are going to be a Sangophage for a second. So in sangophages, sangophages have these special genes. These special genes 
are ones that require archite capsules. So the archite capsule genes cannot be pulled uh, in the gene extraction process. And then when you want to implant them, you need archite capsules to implant them. So they're special. They're different than normal genes. So you have germline genes, xenogenes, and archite xenogenes. Those are the, the major three. And I think that's probably enough information for you to go on. And of course, if you have additional questions, you can always hit me up in the, uh, in the ask a question about the game. So right at the start here, uh, we are, I am gonna plan a little bit of like where we're gonna build. So we do have some geothermal generator vents or uh, steam geysers, I should call them, uh, nearby. Very convenient, given that this map tile, and I should have shown you that, gets frighteningly cold, about negative 40 in the winter. Throw in a cold snap or a climate changer, and that is going to kill organics pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, and I'm not going to be answering any questions for a bit until I get set up. So you're welcome to ask them, but use the channel points because I'm going to be ignoring you. No offense, but uh, this is the way to keep things moving. So what I'm planning on doing is trying to tap into the steam geysers heat generation in order to heat the base that I have. So I'm going to do sort of a, a yin yang -y square here. So this is a 24 by 22 with two geysers involved. I'm going to go ahead and stop, drop a stockpile here. And this is going to be a stockpile for just about anything. And I'm going to allow all. Now, the tunneler I have here, I want to actually set up my mech groups real quick. So all of the mechs that I currently have is going to be set on control group two. One thing that I've noticed is when mechs get first made, they go to control group one. Uh, also, if you want to change your mech color, it's this button here in the mech menu. Uh, and you don't need dyes or anything. They just magically change. It's magic. Um, so I'm going to set them up to control group two because control group one... I'm going to have as a uh, recharge. I find that to be pretty useful. The other thing I want to do is I want to set up allowable zones because there are insects on the map and I can actually use these insects to help fight for me by forcing would be raiders to go through the caves of the insects so that I get left alone, at least initially, because I don't want to have to fight unless I have to. Uh, early on so I can get other things done. So this is the allowable zone and I'm going to set my mechs to be forced to this zone. I'm going to rename this zone uh, Avoid Bugs. And then Wendy is going to be set to the same zone so that nobody goes wandering into the bug caves. So there are four mega spiders, five uh, how many spellipedes? Four spellipedes and two mega scarabs. That's going to be enough to take on a fair bit of uh, early game enemies, I think. All right. The tunneler is going to need some work initially, and I do not have a way to charge up the tunneler. With only basic mech tech, uh, that means I don't have the larger charger research unlocked, which means that I have to use my tunneler wisely and well because what will end up happening to the tunneler is eventually they will power down and only have to 1% per day power back up passively. All right, Wendy, we are going to be using the, uh, the caravan trick. So the lifter has work. They're going to be lifting to the stockpile. The tunneler has work. And then let me give the constructor work. So the initial setup of this wall is going to be very, very basic, where I'm just going to envelop it in a bare minimum sheath of steel to keep me warm. So that is the bare minimum, and I'll put a few doors in there. So I'm going to put a west-facing door here and an east-facing door here. And that's enough for the constructor to start working on. Then I am going to pick all of the items for me to haul myself lightly in caravan. No lifter, pick something heavier uh, over to the stockpile. 
I don't want the lifter to bother hauling light things that I can shove in caravan to speed things up. The links aren't working because they're not, they're broken right now and I can't fix them. It's like a Twitch thing. So you have to remove the spaces. There's nothing I can do about that. And I've already mentioned that several times already. So if you don't know how to remove a space from a link, um, you're out of luck. <laughs> yeah, let me expand this zone so the lifter doesn't bother hauling twice. So then the other thing I want to do is to start setting up uh, perimeter walls. And then I'm also going to disable the auto home zoning so that I don't end up with a home zone that I do not want or like because the auto home zone painting is a little bit generous as to what it wants to add. Whereas in this case, I just want to add the doors and the walls. So in this spot here, this one is going to be a little weird uh, because I don't have any wood. And that's actually going to be a major point of contention in this series. The lack of wood. So it's going to cut like that. And then I guess in this corner, I'll continue the diagonal wall. I'm also strategically placing doors so that I can get out if I want to lure or bait or whatever it might be. Now, I could put a wall here, but I think I'm just going to make this as cheaply as possible, especially given that it's steel, because raiders like to burn steel walls. They don't burn quickly, but they do burn. So with that in mind, I'm going to um, have this bill be built as inexpensively as possible, knowing that I will return to this task later on and replace it with stone so that raiders don't stop raiding and burn my walls. Because that, that's going to be annoying at some point, I'm sure. So I'll put a door down here and a door there. And then I'm going to leave one of these doors open, forced open, to encourage raiders to come through the bugs. And then in this location... Let me think. All right, that would be entire enclosed perimeter. And then the next thing is the avoid bugs. I'm gonna want this zone covered for now uh, so that we can build the walls, but then eventually I'm gonna have a new zone which has us hiding behind the walls, basically shelter in place in the case of infestations, etc. So, things that we're going to want right at the start. Uh, we are going to want a research, high-tech research bench. Now, the issue with this is it's really hard to plan out exactly how the layout of everything is going to be. Um, so, I'm going to stick the high-tech research bench here. And then we're going to want a table, a chair... A chess table and a horseshoe pin and then maybe I'll move the horseshoe pin there and then a bed very modest setup for one person So 
So, Orange Chaos, you ask, when breeding germline genes, is there a way to influence which ones are actually inherited by the baby? No. Not without mods. Not that I know of. Alright, I'm going to build the high-tech research bench last. And then, as far as high-tech research bench goes, uh, let's go ahead and set up some wind power. You know, I think I'm going to add one more door here. And then let's set up some wind power. And the wind power is going to power up uh, the base initially because I will not have geothermal or anything like that researched. Uh, so you ask, does mechs get debuffs in cold? They are good till negative 100 Celsius. So it's not uh, a temperature that we're likely to experience. To answer your question. Alright, at this point, I am going to open up the raffle for the first three mechanoids. So if you're a subscriber and you chat in the channel, uh, you're eligible. The other thing I need to worry about is polar bears. Uh, there aren't any on the map right now, but if there are polar bears, I ought to know about it because they're quite likely to try to eat me early on. And um, I don't know about you guys, but like, I don't love being eaten by polar bears. So if I could avoid that, that, that would be uh, excellent. All right, let's work on the stool. In the bed. All right, I'm not going to do the chest table for now. I don't think it's of immediate concern. How am I planning on dealing with toxic waste? Toxically. Probably launching it at people I don't like. Because who cares? Not in my backyard. Oh. It's telling me that Yuri died. The person I dev moded in. Don't care. Uh-uh. So Talkmore, you ask, every one of those standard xenotypes has at least un one undesirable gene. Does that mean only baselanders can be colonists or slaves or hybrids? It's entirely possible for me to have my own genetic vat-grown hybrids as slaves and or colonists. But yes, initially that does mean that uh, baseliners are ideal slaves because they don't have bad genes that we'd want to filter out of the gene pool. The other thing I'm going to do for now is delete the exterior walls so they can get a roof over my head sooner than later. Or not delete them, but forbid them so that we work on the structure itself. And Wendy, you, so I don't have to micromanage you so much, are going to be put on please work and only work schedule. Because I don't want to have to shift click everything. You can see the Constructoid's doing a pretty good job, too. And the Lifter hauling the steel over where it's useful. The current ambient temperature is not so bad. It's the first of Joggist, so it's not like Wendy is in uh, dire need of heat. She is good till about negative 8 Celsius, and it's uh, 12 degrees warmer than that. So she's, oh, doing fine. Yeah, the, uh, the mining bot is putting out a ton of work. This scenario is possible without a tunneler. 
uh, but just a lot more difficult where your mechanator's just going to have to do a lot of mining initially. Or you build very modestly and small, but given the backstory, Wendy doesn't do modest or small. She goes big. That's all she does. It is getting to the hour that she wants to sleep. Um, what is it? 22 to 5? So, no sleep for you right now. There is more important things for you to do. We should officially be inside now. But because it's such a large structure, it's not registering as needing a roof. So, I have to manually designate a roof. Because, again, go big or go home. Make sure that the tunneler has work to do. Looks like the constructor bot is hauling stuff for the wind turbines. She's getting sleepy, but uh, she's happy enough. And first roll is for the tunneler. Orange Chaos, the Tunnelbot. So the Tunnelbots are also really good tanks as well. And then the Constructor Bot is Kisha, wherever it is. That's the lifter. And then I also have to enable it so that the uh, robot names are shown. And then Solvane. Where is the... Here we go. Alright, it is becoming enclosed. Definitely skipped a meal or two. Um, this was 20 across. So if I go like up 8, down 8, and then over, we can see... Roughly where pillars could be. That way we can get the rest of the roof up. Okay, it is indoors. And you... are going to be allowed to sleep, or whatever you want. Probably sleep. So it looks like uh, the constructor bot, Kisha, is getting the turbines going. I'm encouraging here, encouraging the southern turbine first, because the northern one won't be connected. That will get power up sooner than later. Anything that has a quality uh, build on it, I'm going to try to do with Wendy instead. And then this construct bot, uh, once the turbines are done, I will unforbid the external uh, perimeter walls, and we'll get that is the next project. So the current project is set up perimeter walls. Kish is good. You got it. Now I'm going to have uh, Mike Tyson's uh, voice stuck in my head for a bit.
Oh, we already have a raid. Attacking immediately. Bell the genie. Really? A genie thinks that they can attack me? That's cute. They're also unwaveringly loyal, so they'll never join. Not that I would allow it. Alright, come on. Wendy, uh, I'm going to wake you up for this because your bloodlust, you're going to want to be a part of this fight. I actually don't want Orange Chaos to tank here. So I'm going to sign Orange Chaos to group one and do a dormant self-charge. Or just splat. Alright. The reason I don't want them to tank is when mechs take damage, you repair them by... Uh, but in the process of repairing them, they drain their batteries. So in order for him or it to do the most work, it's best if the robot that I'm not going to be able to charge anytime soon does not take damage. Because I don't... I won't have a functional way to charge that bot for a bit. I keep hearing what I think is polar bears, but they're not. They're, I think, just the uh, mega spiders down here that are roaring at me. All right, let's go ahead and get a standing light. And then start some research. And... Also, probably tech building. But research, first and foremost, because I'm going to want hydroponics probably very soon. Time to make the genie into meals? Well, the body is not going to rot out there for a bit. But yeah, I could definitely make the genie into meals. I, uh, I don't ha have the materials for a butcher table, because there is no wood on an ice sheet. Um, and none of the prefabbed buildings are going to have wood sarcophagi or anything like that, so I would have to do a, a craft or a butcher spot, which is lower yield, lower leather. It's fine, just not great. Can you still enslave someone who's unwaveringly loyal? Uh, no. They will never... The, the game warns you about that. Refuse to be recruited if taken prisoner. They're basically just for gene and organ donation. Or, well, whatever donation is when they're non willing. Gene ripping. Alright, that is totally dug out. Kish is starting on the. on the uh, research table. Then the other thing I could uh, put in here. Is some batteries, because I don't expect that uh, the wind is active all the time. Batteries are going to help with that. You can still ensla enslave unwaveringly loyal. Yeah, but not in this series. They have genes that prohibit it. I really don't want to have to reiterate the rules like constantly, so uh, I do have a macro for that. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put dead power underneath the research bench, so that we can power it off whenever. And then, let's also start to do the perimeter walls, because the construction bot does not have additional work, and that would be a good task for it to do. So I'm not going to be able to charge the Tunneler until I take on the first robot boss. But I can recharge the mechs. Um, the other thing is I have to sort of plan how everything's going to be laid out, which is a little tricky. I think what I'm going to do is eventually have everything double walled and the outside walls are going to be stone. Right, so 
I am just painting sort of what double walls would look like uh, so as to plan around it and for it to not be a problem. So that's, that's more or less what the double walls are going to look like. Um, then I think what I'm going to do is a lot of the biotech buildings, kind of like a comms console or a nutrient paste dispenser, um, don't allow you to floor. They're not passable. So if you want to floor around it, you have to floor around it either beforehand early or um, you have to leave space for it. So with that in mind, if I set it up like this where it's floating, then I can alternatively line the walls with storage later on, which I think is probably the route to go. That this laboratory is one large sort of multi-use structure. Uh, so, yeah. And I'm going to station the, the, the tech setups uh, sort of in the same uh, area as one another. So I'm going to have the... And let's also include cables. And then I'm going to have the... Uh, Wendy also start to gestate. I'm going to kick off the gestator before I even do research. Let's have you make the power cable. Then I can center this light a little bit better. So it casts light more efficiently and that looks good. All right, so here's the mech gestator. And the first thing I'm gonna gestate is going to be an aggro hand. I don't want Wendy to spend too much time having to uh, sow crops. So an aggro hand will help to free her up in that way. So bills, just a aggro hand. And then after the aggro hand, I'll probably do a bunch of militors, which are military bots. Um, good. I checked the tunneler just in time. Tunneler was almost out of tasks to do. What does the extract skull do? Our ideology has a preference for skull spikes. So you rip out their skull and stick it on a spike as a decoration. And it makes uh, your the people with that specific ideology happier if you have skull spike ideology. It is a waste of meat initially, but when we have an abundance of corpses, it won't be a, such a bad idea to do. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do is nest a dead cable over here near the gestator and recharger so I can turn them on and off remotely as I please. Can constructors fail at building? So all of the robots basically have um, 10 skill. So if it depends on the skill that they're doing, like you can fail medicine at 10 and surgeries at 10, but you cannot fail constructions at 10. So that probably answers your question about all bots, because eventually there are doctor bots and fabricator bots. Um, all right, it's 65 Fahrenheit or 18 Celsius in there. That's not bad. That's a lot of recreation you're getting by sitting in snow. But all right, sure, I guess.
Now we're working on the cabling. So if I open the power tab, we have perimeter power, perfect. All right, I think it's time to go into work priorities. And make her research. So the first thing I'm gonna research is hydroponics because that should be pretty obvious to all of you. But then after that, uh, that will be left up to you. So here is the first poll. Uh, what should I research after hydroponics? So smithing, which leads to machining, which eventually leads to multi-analyzer. Toxifier generator for easy power. Uh, solar for power that offsets grow lights. Fertility procedures, if we get prisoners. Uh, xenogenetics, if we get prisoners. Uh, psychoid brewing for some morale. Beer brewing for the same thing, morale. Drug production, in case we have prisoners that rely upon regular dosage of drugs. Or to spend 3200 on geothermal power. Uh, which is a big project that will take a while. And cheers! Zippy, thank you for the resub. Sorry about everybody in the uh, in the feed that I didn't get to, but I just wanted to cover the details of this series. All right, so Orange Chaos, it looks like you are currently idle, and I am, because this is enough metal for now, going to tell you to join one and dormant self-charge, but only after you get closer to me, in case I need you in a pinch quickly. So now Orange Chaos has gone dormant. I've got uh, 1,400, no, 1,700 steel to haul, which is plenty. And he's just going to recharge 1% per day as group one. So right now I have group one, which is Orange Chaos, self-charging, and then Kish and Solwain as group two, uh, still working, but lower on energy, but I already have a recharger for them. So I don't need to uh, worry about that so much. Hi, buddy. Let's take this off of you. And give you a treat. All right, the room is barely dirty at all. I'll just do one quick once over. Trying to get the last of the filth up. If actually I had the construction bot pull up the floors, it would stay cleaner. Strangely enough. Uh, but I'd rather have the construction bot working on perimeter walls. That's a, definitely a better use of time. So, uh, I'm actually going to change group one. And it looks like geothermal power will be it. So group one is going to be recharging. That doesn't change Orange Chaos's strategy. Um, but for group... For the hauler, if assigned to group one, and with the recharger plugged on, they will go to the recharger instead. It will start to generate waste, so I'm going to have to build a waste facility. Um, which I will be doing in a second. So in terms of waste facility, we have another geothermal generator here, which I might... I'm going to want to not be attached to a waste facility that has to be cold. Um, I'm going to say a waste facility is probably here, maybe. Squares are the most thermally efficient shape. And that can be my waste box. With, uh, I think... What I will do, given that the ambient temperature is not so hot, I'm going to have a self-enclosed chimney so that um, no one can harm the chimneys from the outside. Oop, that's backwards. So that will be where I store the toxic waste packs until I have a better method to get rid of them. And waste needs to be frozen. So I'm going to work on the perimeter walls first. I think the perimeter walls are more of an urgent uh, requirement. 
But then eventually we'll get to dealing with the toxic waste packs that we accumulate. So then this power. I'm going to power it up all around it once we get there. Perfect. Now let me take that pull down. Can waste packs not go on shelves? They cannot. Unless something is patched since yesterday. Once I build my first shelf, I, uh, I'll be able to tell you with certainty. So let's build a quick shelf. Nope. Nope. It cannot. It might have been as a result of the code for... Because when toxic waste packs decay, if you put them on shelves, the density per square meter would be really different than if you're not on shelves. So it might be a way to prevent like an environmental catastrophes because you would triple the density to footprint ratio if you allowed them on um, on shelves. Just Just a theory of mine. I'm not really sure why in the code they didn't set it up like that, but again, that would be my theory. And shelves, yeah, shelves normally stop the decay of items, so putting them on shelves, people would be like, why are they decaying on shelves? That's actually a really good point. People would be confused as to why their shelves weren't working, and it's like, no, shelves were never intended to allow you to put toxic waste packs on them to stop decay. That's not, uh, that's not how they were designed. So we have the northern and western walls built. Uh, looks like I'm going to need to do a quick recharge of the construction bot soon because it's down to 16%. Um, this button here tells them when to go automatically for a recharge. So they're set at 5%, but I'm going to actually bump that up to 10. Because it's kind of annoying to have to run across a large map when robots run themselves out. And then what I will do is uh, once this construction bot gets down to 5% or so, which will be in about a half a day, I'll kick him off of the... Uh, I'll kick him off of his current or its current um, construction task. And All right, So the other thing that I wanted to do is to plan out the grow room. Where it's going to go exactly. So maybe I'll nest it in here. Because I already got a lot going on around there. So it will share walls, which is pretty good. So that is a... Let me get rid of these false walls. And that's a... Oops. 5x9. 5x11. 9x9. 5x11. Which means that these walls can actually move up a little... And be the old walls get destroyed. Oops. Okay. Something like that. There's some structures in the way, uh, but I'll get rid of those eventually. Sammy, thank you for the resub. And ALS Gamer, thank you for all of the bits. You have been unbelievably generous. Cheers. It's too much. How am I liking the new DLC? Uh, it's pretty awesome. All right. You start working again. The other thing I could do to make this a little bit faster with the uh, the builder bot is stick my steel here as a temporary small stockpile. 
so that um, there's lots of steel because the hydroponics construction project will absolutely decimate my steel supply because each hydroponic bench is relatively expensive. So I'm about... I'm getting there. Orange Chaos is back up to 23%. And then Mr. Construction Bot, or Mrs. I keep gendering them. The Construction Bot is about to hit the threshold of 10% energy and return back to the charger. So instead of charging right now, which would be annoying with these unfinished, I'm going to change the charge threshold and then change back. You can't directly control the robots in terms of their work unless you zone them and that gets a little wonky. So that's what I did just now was easier. So all that I have left in this perimeter are these two doors. Um, but I don't really care about getting the doors constructed unless Manhunters come. Uh, but with that said out loud, I can totally see Randy sending me Manhunters. So I'm going to uh, stop that. Ooh, Rainy. Hi, Rainy. You are a baseliner who's incapable of violence. Really high social. Um, okay. How quick are you bleeding? Quite. Can mech stone cut? Uh, yes. Not the ones I have, but yes. The fabricator mechs in the high mech tech tree uh, can stone cut. They can stone cut, they can make components. They do crafting, smithing, tailoring tasks. That's fine for now, but we're definitely going to move her again. Can Holler Mechs rescue? Uh, they are not allowed. Rescue is a different task. Oh, the Agrahan's done. So this is my bed. That's your bed. I don't know what to do with you yet. Um, so I'm just going to leave you for now. So here we go. I do have some waste now to deal with. Uh, and I don't have a place to store this waste yet. So I'm going to have to deal with that. But uh, let's go ahead and just date a Militor. Actually, a few Militors. And then I'll put up the Chen Point Redemption, or the, uh, the Raffle Timer again. And I'll try to be better about uh, raffling off on time, because I'm not always good at that. So Raffle time Timer's up for the Agri Hand. And this aggro hand is defaulted to group one, and group one is defaulted to just be dormant and recharge, which is by design. I'm not really sure I want a, um, a slave that doesn't combat, so I'll probably just... Um, rip their jeans or something. Yeah, I won't have a bandwidth for a third Militor. Uh, yeah, I will. Your math is wrong. Alright, Wendy. Research time. There we go. Thank you for watching RimWorld Biotech, the first Wendigo, which originally streamed live on Twitch October 27th. 
If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that made it all the way to the credits and support the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow mad scientists.